the echo of poetic words from a group of children. The rich resonance of the words mixes with the sounds of nature and talk of the beauty of the mountains. And through the centuries, those words have sent messages of comfort to the men and women who work in the rolling uplands of the Capaz Mountains. Those words speak to the city dwellers. The writings and poems of the poet Nizami, who was born here in Ganja. It is Azerbaijan's second largest city to the northwest of the country, where the poet lived and wrote in the 12th century. His tomb was first mentioned in historical chronicles in the early 1600s, a place of devoted pilgrimage for many centuries. It is the third mausoleum to stand on this site. Nizami is not just a philosopher. He and his poems are very important. A variety of visitors come to this mausoleum, not just adults, but also school children. The first thing people do who visit the city for the first time is to come here. Pilgrims leave flowers in the tomb of the poet who was versed in many disciplines, including mathematics, astronomy and astrology. On a visit from a local secondary school, this teacher believes his legacy provides lessons for life. Nizami Ganja teaches us through his poems. He dedicated some to his son. They have a message for all children to love people, to love their country, the motherland, and to be close to your family, to be wise and intelligent. And if someone chooses to listen to these words, then they should try to teach others to follow in his footsteps. It's believed his writings inspired William Shakespeare to pen his tragic love story, Romeo and Juliet, and the lyrics of rock guitarist Eric Clapton's hit song, Layla, are said to have their origins in one of Nizami's poems. Many writers and poets live and work now in the city, which is the academic and literary center of Azerbaijan. Sahib Ibrahimli has been writing for 40 years as a scientist, dramatist and poet. Living here in Azerbaijan, I get good feelings about the country's history. I'm very interested in our history, in the difficult times which the country has faced and in the country's heroes. I'm continuing to do more research on this subject, as I want our young people to know more about Azerbaijan's past. I want the world and everyone to know about the history of Azerbaijan and so to get to know the country better. Words are not the only tool for creative expressions. One poet uses matchsticks. I'm working on an Azeri warrior and when I make these models I only use matchsticks and their boxes to create them. Away from his workshop, dominating the tea house which he owns and taking pride of place is a model of Nizami. It took Aftendil just over a year to complete with three and a half thousand matches. Close to the center of Ganja, stones from Sochi and bottles from the Champagne region in France have been used to create a poignant tribute of a very different kind. This house took 30 years to build, a monument to a Soviet soldier lost in the conflict of the Second World War, the work of his heartbroken brother. Some words now, not from a poet, but the world-famous explorer Marco Polo, who visited this region in the 13th century. He reported that he saw bubbling from the ground springs of black goo which men burned. Now they come from all over the world, not to burn the oil, but to take a bath in it. Join us as we take the plunge on the next Azeri life.